Hello everyone, I am Freedy here, and today I'm going to be showing off the Hazard of the Cast Assault Rifle, a new Forsaken weapon introduced to us in a new Forsaken DLC. The Hazard of the Cast is a legendary 450 kinetic assault rifle that can only be gotten for the new game mode called Gambit, either through Gambit endgame drops, Gambit bounties, or Gambit ranking up. It's a very decent looking, beautiful sounding and well built auto rifle that can be used in all activities. Its stats are very forgiving and user friendly for all users using it straight out of the package which I highly recommend everyone to at least get and keep if you want a super weapon that doesn't require a lot of focus to use around it. Now, its base stats are the following. It has a range of 64, stability of 41, handling of 44, reload speed of 43, aim assist 44, recoil direction 69 and zoom 16. Now those are the base stats of the weapon without any perks or scoops attached to the weapon just of yet but as you can see its stats across the board is very solid for a 450 RPM auto rifle. Now if we take a look at my version, you can see that I got lucky with my roll with some of the perks I rolled with. In the first slot I have corkscrew rifling which slightly increases range, stability and handling speed and polygonal rifling which increases my stability. In the second slot I have a pendant mag which increases my magazine side and high caliber rounds which slightly increases my range but also knock them out the target with their aim or causing them to flinch more often. In the first slot I have Grave Robber which loads a portion of my weapon through milling and is great for against low tier enemies in the heat of a fight. And lastly we have Kill Clip which increases our weapon's damage as they kill and is a great stable perk to have for any weapon it comes on. My version also comes with a range masterwork which is great to have but not really needed as you already have a large amount of range to begin with plus you're not really going to be using this at a sniper to scout rifle range because of the severe damage drop off. Now it uses a precision frame which allows the recoil to be more predictably vertical when firing so the shots are more controllable and straight and all rounds when it lands will be more precise on your end. Although its recoil pattern does tend to kick upwards straight after the first few shots but it's controllable and easy to recenter on your end. This means focusing on critical points or body shots in close to medium ranges will be a lot more easier to do instead of having to fight against the recoil pattern. This also means you don't have to rely on using a counterbalance mod which gives you a plus 15 in stability to straighten out its recoil as it's already at a decent spot in terms of stability and recoil pattern but putting on one will push the stability from 41 to 56 to which shots should now bump it up to be even more accurate, kind of laser like. I would recommend mass work wise to try and get stability or reload speed mass work to further enhance its pros as for whatever content you use it in for so PvE or PvP, it will still greatly benefit from it. For the mods, anything goes as it's down to personal preference on how to make the weapon fit your playstyle. But I would say targeting adjuster or radar tuner are good to have for PvP, while minor, major and boss specs are better suited for PvE based content, depending on the weapon's role you get. Now it has a relatively good TDK, requiring around 3 to 4 shots to the head in PvP and then the rest of the body to down a player. But this does vary depending on the player's resilience, as past 5 resilience it will require an extra round of the body or head to down them quicker. Considering how accurate the weapon already is, you're going to be landing headshots in the crucible very consistently, which works in your favour in medium to long range fights, where body shots won't be as favourable in these type of engagements. In close to medium ranges, it does 24 to 26 critical damage in PvP, while it does 16 to the body, which is actually normal for a 450 weapon. If you have kill crit active, it will increase your critical damage from 24 to 34 and body shots to 23, which the effects are very noticeable and can make the weapon a very deadly force in medium engagements. The role I managed to get is one to two off from being a god roll, where if I had an arrow headed break and a moment instead of grey robber, then this weapon would have the ideal perks for using in crucible and tearing the arena up with its well crafted stats. It would also make this weapon favourable to use in PvE against low to mid tier enemies but nothing against the elites as it doesn't feel like it hits hard enough against them. I would say if you manage to get one with the same role I had but with our head breaks and either triple tap or ambitious assassin then you would have a good god role designed for pve purposes. My role now makes it perfect to use against mainly pvp players because of the good stability, range and damage which strongly favours some of the maps in game since they're designed for close to medium range engagements. But through playing around with it in PvE content, it does also do some fairly well damage against most enemy types that aren't elites or bosses. As, as at point there, that's when I noticed the weapon tends to fail at giving out good damage. Now, think of it similar to the Yuyo Gift back when the game first released. It's just like that weapon, or better yet, on par with the weapon, 
but instead of being a reliable energy weapon that you always rely on for print snipes and content, you have a good kinetic weapon which gives free reign to cover close to medium engagements, and also free reign to pick any secondary weapon which best pairs with weapon, which I do love to pair with a full auto shotgun for that extra bit of damage when I need it. Overall, this weapon is a very well crafted and super weapon for endgame activity with its smooth stats that I would score as a 5-5 must have weapon. It has a lot of pros that I can see being favourable for the top end PvP players or beginner friendly players that many would gravitate around and with RNG rolls you may get lucky and pull a godly roll that many would kill for. I would say if you don't have this weapon then go out and get it as it's one of the weapons that many people will sleep on and realise down the line of how great it actually is because of the stats on its own makes the weapon work compared to most ARs in game. But honestly, this is definitely a weapon you should definitely have or keep on hold for the near future. So that comes to the end of the weapon review video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload. As I appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.